been in the Aston for a little while and I got a lot of questions about it so I thought I would take the Aston for an essential admin trip and also talk to you guys along the way and also update you on what is going on with my ever increasingly ridiculous garage and what is going on with them all during this unprecedented period of inactivity and lockdown. This video is in response to a lot of you in my DMs asking about specific cars. I'll just do that window up, you don't want the VA noise just yet. Asking about specific cars and also about the state of my collection, what I'm doing with them all, where they all are, and how on earth they're going to cope with basically a few months of not being driven. So in this video then, I'm gonna run through what's staying, what's going, what's in, what's out, and what I'm doing with all of the cars when they're just sat around, because it is quite an unhealthy time for cars to be sat around. They're pretty much at their most unhealthy when they're not doing anything. And I think it's a good idea just to run through some things that you can do at home keep your car tip top and ready to roll when we come out of this period. Not only are they going to be ready to enjoy but also you're not going to face huge bills when you come to turn them on again. So I'm going to run through then car by car exactly what's going on with them, what I'm doing with them and how I'm keeping them ship shape and ready to go. Off the bat then I'm going to start with the Aston Martin Vantage AMR, the car that I'm now sat in. A car that I bought in December 2018 I believe so actually it's a year and a half ago now. Many of you will most know this car for the car that I took to Monaco last year. I actually blasted this round the south of France and the mountain roads there last year. car timeless timeless piece of design i love it it's obviously got the naturally aspirated 430 odd brake horsepower v8 in it mated to a six speed manual gearbox a very kind of brutish rudimental drive with this carbon throughout in here carbon door skins carbon all over there alcantara everywhere carbon backed lime stitched bucket seats it's just a cool place to be i absolutely love this car and i haven't actually driven it that said and i would say three months anyway prior to all this kind of uh, lockdown activity so a car that's very definitely been kind of waiting the wings and hibernating it until well actually this time of year and obviously now it can't be used once again so for this car along with all my other cars i actually have them on charge when they are not being used and you wouldn't believe the amount of charging questions i get about my vehicles. Now some of you out there may be thinking, well it's quite simple Tom, you just plug your car into some sort of charger and you just let it sit there and it'll charge it up, innit? it? It'll just top up the battery and it'll keep it fully charged and jobs are good and Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt and off you go. Actually that's not true. So, so common terminology then is, oh I'm putting my car on trickle charge. Now this applies to all my cars so I'm not going to go through all of it one by one, but there are little nuances for the charging on each car. Not every car you charge in exactly the same way. They don't all plug in the same way, so we'll go into the specifics on each one. But the same essential science applies to all of them. Now, many people say my car's on trickle charge. Trickle charges technically work by just topping your battery up, periodically just dumping in a load of power and just topping up the battery. The trickle charger does not communicate with the battery. The trickle charger is effectively every now and again just going, ah, oh, whatever, have a load of power, I'm sure that'll top it up, that's fine. Doesn't get anything back from the battery and doesn't respond to whether or not the battery's actually communicating with it, the health of the battery or anything like that. Trickle chargers are quite basic and not what I'd recommend for anyone's car, let alone a car that's as complex as one of these or one of my supercars that are very, very power dependent. Now, not many people know this, but the battery is effectively the heart of the car. It's not actually the engine per se. With low power in your battery, you will start to see things going wrong in your car and it actually damages the overall health of the car, that said. Now we all know with a flat battery, the car won't start, 
but even with low voltage, non-essential items will start to fiddle around and go wrong. I've experienced this in a previous life with my first Ferrari F12. I used to leave it in a garage with no power, and every now and again I'd get in it, the radio wouldn't work, the sat-nav wouldn't work, the screens wouldn't work, the dash would be turned off, and I took it into Ferrari saying, you know, oi guys, you know, this is a bit shoddy, what's going on? Why is it so ropey? Like, it shouldn't be doing this. And they said, you know, do you have it on power? And I said, well, no. And well, actually, what the car will do, it will start cutting the non-essential items, i.e. the dash, I mean, that's pretty essential, but it'll start cutting things like that, and it's not very good for the car at all, so do leave it plugged in. So I learned my lesson fairly early on that it's a pretty stupid idea. That said, I did actually have some issues with my SV as well. I left that off charge for a little while and the gearbox actually went on it. I couldn't change gear, I could turn it on, so there's enough power to start, but there wasn't enough power to feed the gearbox properly. So the gearbox went on it, so I had this car that would start, but it wouldn't go into gear. I couldn't get it moving to get the car going and get some charge back in the battery by driving it around. So I was left with this kind of V12 lemon. It had to get recovered from underground, which I can assure you was not uh, not a pleasant process, especially with a massive V12 car uh, that was basically a pudding. That in the end actually had to go all the way back to Lambo with Lambo Assist, and it was just a complete faff, all because I didn't leave it plugged in. Now then, we come back to the trickle charger thing. You don't really want your car on a trickle charger per se, you want it plugged in to a smart charger. Smart chargers are exactly that, they are a bit smarter, they communicate with the battery, they know how much power is needed, they know the health of the battery, they will top the battery up with a safe surge of power up to the point that it's pretty much full. It will know when it's about to be full and then it will leave it for a bit and then it will top it up periodically as and when is needed. It will be communicating the whole time with the battery. This not only prevents the battery from going flat of course, but it also prevents overcharging which can damage your battery as well. And also deposits forming on the battery, which I'm not going to get too sciencey and technical about, but effectively most batteries and most cars will build up deposits on them and the battery will actually start being less affected over time. A smart charger will actually break down these deposits as well, so it not only keeps your car healthy, but it also keeps your battery healthy. And if anyone that's ever replaced a battery in a Ferrari or any big car or any car in fact ever, will know that a new battery is actually not something you really want to be buying the whole time. Another enormous misconception, and this will save you money as well, is that all battery chargers have to be bought from the OEM manufacturer direct with their logo on. Not true. I actually use a SeaTech MXX 5.0, which is almost their kind of general charger for most cars. That will suffice for this car and many, many others. All the applications are on their website. With this particular model, you actually need an adapter which plugs into the cigarette lighter shaped hole, which is in the boot of this car. Now, not all cars charge the same. Some of them you charge through the cigarette lighter. I charge my Porsches through them, but this one goes through the back. So this just sits then on charge whilst I'm not using it. And the other misconception is that you shouldn't have a charger plugged in for months on end. You can leave SeaTech chargers plugged in for months on end. They are spark proof and as I say, they're constantly communicating with the battery so they won't overcharge them, they won't overheat, there won't be any nonsense going on and it will keep your battery nice and healthy. So as soon as you get back to your car, you plug it in and away you go. Right, Aston covered then, a little bit of uh, battery banter also covered off then. What else have I got in the garage? The F12 is in the garage as well, it is alive, it is well. I actually took that out recently for my lockdown video. Again, that is plugged in on charge. Now that is actually using a Ferrari charger. That came with the car, so I've got that plugged in on there. The F12 is probably gonna stay in the garage long term, I would say. I've got no immediate plans to sell that car. Residually, they're very, very good news. Um, certainly the A12 is dropping like a stone, and the F12 is holding firm, so, F12 is going to knock around for a while, particularly as it's a 66 plate, it's in warranty for quite a while, it's a very late car, it's a very low miles car and it's an spec that I absolutely love. I see the F12 being in my garage for hopefully some years to come, um, TGE financial collapse aside, I'm hoping I can afford to hold on to that one for, for many moons to come. I got it at quite a good price and I don't think I will lose too much money on it. That said, I've probably lost maybe 20k on it by now, possibly. Uh, which sounds awfully flippant, but in the in the kind of supercar market, um, 20 for you know 18 months of use isn't the end of the world. I'm not hugely happy about that, but it's not the end of the world. So F12 remaining for the time being. We'll stick with Ferrari then. Pista, Pista. You've had an update on that. I was in that in my last video with my girlfriend. The Pista sticking around, and the Pista is actually different 
charging wise. The Pista is a lithium battery. Lithium batteries are different to the conventional batteries you often find in most cars, which can be wet, which can be dry. More on that on CTEX website if you want to read into all of that. But it is a lithium battery, so it's a very small battery. It's a lightweight battery, and you often find them in McLarens and also the, the lightweight homologated special variants of a lot of cars. Lithium batteries have to be treated slightly different to your conventional battery in something like this car. Lithium batteries, you really don't want to let get flat. So the Pista is one that I categorically, religiously have to have on charge the whole time. I suspect it'll probably last five days a week or so without being plugged in. But with trackers in cars these days, constantly draining batteries, I don't trust it to just sit there and retain its charge. So, lithium batteries, if you let them get flat, you can screw up the whole battery and it will need a new battery if you let it get flat completely. Now, not every time, I don't know the exact science behind it, but let's just say if you do let it go flat, you run a very high chance of needing a new battery. Now, for those thinking that a piece of battery would be like most other ones that are like, 80 quid, 150 quid, whatever it is, wrong. They're two to three grand. So if you let that go flat and it needs a new battery, that's a two to three grand bill. I don't know about you, I don't like the sound of that. So the Pista battery is really one that needs to be topped up. Now Ferrari have actually been really good about this. On their modern models, you actually charge it via a magnetic port just above the number plate and it literally just clicks straight on on the outside which is really really convenient and actually just as well really because you do have to keep it plugged in the whole ruddy time now same story as well with that if you buy a lithium excess charger from SeaTac, it is give or take exactly the same thing it doesn't look as snazzy with the red stickers on it but it's designed specifically for lithium batteries and SeaTac actually produced them for ferrari one caveat you will need to buy the ferrari adapter that clicks on but that's a very cheap and easy thing to buy and that just means actually that you've got a lithium charger then you can apply to other cars and you can also put the adapter on and use it for a Ferrari as well. Pista's staying for the time being as well. I might look to get rid of it later in the summer. I want to use it a little bit more and again it depends what business is saying, it depends what happens with this pandemic and what you know what you know what the state of my finances, income and all the rest of it how long the Pista's actually going to stay for. I wish I could give more concrete answers but this time it's it is very up in the air. Moving on then, excitingly, to the Carrera GT. The Carrera GT has obviously just arrived in my garage. There are no plans to get rid of it anytime soon, quite clearly. I've had it a matter of months, and it's a car that I've not even been able to enjoy or get to grips with yet. So the Carrera GT is sticking around. Now the Carrera GT was from a time before lithium batteries are used willy-nilly in cars. So I've actually got a SeaTech MXS 5.0 plugged into that as well. A very standard charger for a very exotic car. But that's the beauty of it. With a smart charger, you can just plug it in and the charger will work out exactly what that battery and what that car needs. So that is on charge as well. And not only that, the position of the charger in the Carrera GT is actually under the engine bay and you have to loop the wires out over the bodywork so the charger will dangle down by the bodywork. SeaTac have thought of that and they actually provide rubber bumpers as well. So that's encased in a rubber bumper and sits chilling on the side of the car. It's got PPF, so don't panic. But I'm very, very careful with that. Also in the garage then, well not actually as the case may be, is my 996 Carrera 4S. That has just had full new suspension put on it, an in-canal exhaust, new exhaust tips, and new suspension arms as well actually. That is actually not in the garage. That is still at RPM Technic awaiting collection or delivery. Again, with the pandemic, it's not been something that I've prioritized and I've not been something that I've actually gone out and sorted out. I'm probably gonna leave it there till things calm down a little bit and restrictions are lifted a little bit, but it is still with them. Again, I leave that on charge and that's actually plugged in through the cigarette lighter here on the dash. Again, with the same charger actually that the Carrera GT uses, which is quite cool. Mention the Carrera GT then, that actually connects directly to the battery terminals. And they say if you are to leave your car plugged in for an extensive period of time, you should clean the battery terminals. And you should also grease them up a little bit to prevent any corrosion or any nonsense going on whilst you are away. My third Porsche then, the 912. A lot of you are asking about that car. Again, that car is finished. It is not fully restowed, but it is now structurally sound. So it's got new floor pans, it's got new wings. Uh, the suspension has been sorted on that as well, thanks to Kony Shocks. And that car, again, is something that I keep charged the whole time, because that's got at least one track in it. I don't know whether the previous owner had a tracker on it as well, which will still be draining the battery. It's got a modern radio in it and a modern alarm all added to it. So those things will all be draining the battery. 
So yeah, that is left on charge as well. And that is hooked up to the battery terminals directly. So all those tips that I just mentioned about cleaning the terminals and whatnot, they all apply to that car. And that's a car that will be sat around probably for years now, uh, being used on a very occasional basis. My Land Rover Defender, that is still around as well. That is actually chilling in my garage, but not all my parking spots have power sources to them. So that is in a spot that I have uh, delegated to the Defender because I'm not that bothered if it runs out of battery. And indeed, the other day I went to get in it just to take it around the block and keep it, you know, topped up and uh, ship shape. But the battery is actually gone on that car. So it's uh, flat as a pancake, it won't move. Um, so I'll need, to, uh, I'll need to sort that out at some point. But yeah, there we go. I'm not so precious to the Bat Defender. It's about as complex as a calculator, so it doesn't really matter too much if that goes wrong. And it's very, very uh, kind of uh, efficient to fix and cheapish to fix. I'm not so worried about that car. The other two cars I have sitting around still, they're actually in constant use, and I'm using them sort of, well, as much as I can at the moment. Uh, they're my sort of go-to cars. My Range Rover Vogue E-Hybrid P400E, and also ah, my AMG GT. Now both of those cars are less finicky, they're more kind of daily cars and they're kind of, I guess, more resilient to being left sitting around. I'm not so precious about either of those two cars. They're not so much occasional used kind of toy cars, they're more, I guess just more usable. I know it sounds stupid to say AMG GT is more of a daily, uh, but it really is. It's a very, very usable car. So those two sit not on charge, but they get enough use even at the moment-ish that they are actually fine not plugged in. AMG GT will go 12 months after I picked it up, so whenever that was, um, early this year, um, so I've got it till early 2021, and that'll go back to Mercedes. That is on a VIP scheme. Um, I'm paying monthly for it, but it'll just go straight back to them early next year. And the Range Rover as well is on a two year lease. That'll be two years from the point at which I collected it, and that video is back on my channel. That is in the past few months as well. So I've got about 18 months or so left with that car. So that's where those two cars are going, where they've been, but they're fine. Uh, they're not particularly clean, but they're chilling. So many people have said, oh, you know, why don't you saw on your cars? Why don't you kind of declare them off the road? Cancel the insurance and all that kind of stuff. Well, canceling the insurance, first and foremost, is a bit silly. Um, they still need to be insured as far as I'm concerned. They're in a car park, if there's a fire or a flood or something like that, then I'm gonna keep them insured. So I think that's a bit ridiculous to say that. Uh, but far, as far as sorting them is concerned, I do like occasionally taking them out still. So I will still leave them taxed and ready to roll. Moreover, I'm actually terrible with admin, so I'd probably not find the form until it was time to actually come out of the lockdown anyway. So cost effective wise, maybe more effective to sawn them and get a little refund on the tax. But yeah, purely just being a moron, I haven't sawned any of them. And as far as the panics concerning, you know, there's a pandemic, sell your car, sell your mom, sell your kidneys. I'm not doing any of that. I'm holding on to everything. Obviously everything has a price and if I'm offered silly money on anything, then I would consider it, but nothing's actively for sale. No, actually, I'm lying. 458 Spider, that is with Dean. That is with Dean at DMB. It is now in his unit, prepped for sale. I've got someone on that car. They're going through the finance at the moment. It's proving to be a little bit slow with what's going on. Um, but that is tentatively under offer. So I don't know what's going on with that car. I don't know whether the finance will be approved for this chap. Um, it's not it's not completely straightforward. So the 458 Spider, again, that was a, a non-lithium battery, but that was sat in storage under a cover, plugged in as well. I'm hoping to get up to Dean and follow the 458 up there because I sent it on a truck. I'm hoping to get up there and film with it one last time before it goes. I'm gonna explain my exact rationale as to why that car is going. I'm kind of secretly hoping it doesn't sell, um, but I guess that's not particularly sensible. I think that's pretty much it then car wise. If you want a CTEC charge and look after your car whilst it's not being used, I would highly, highly recommend you get one. I believe they're on Halfords and the link I will leave below to that. As I say though, I would really, really recommend your car is put on charge and you do not skimp on a charger. You'll see that there are other chargers around, but trust me, you really, really, really don't want to skimp on a charger. It's just not something I would try and skimp 30 quid on. It's not worth doing. Just put your faith in the best and just get a CTEC because if you get a rubbish one and God forbid something happens with it or it screws your battery, you know the power coming out of the plug suddenly surges for whatever reason off the grid. CTEC charger will actually protect your battery and protect your car. Other chargers may not do that. So it, it's really important 
and God forbid anything worse happens. I know there was a, a fire many moons ago at um, Marinello, I think, in their service center, and about 60 or 70 cars went up, and that was from a Charger to a Ferrari 360. So God forbid anything like that, I just wouldn't leave it to chance with kind of some dodgy Charger you found God knows where. Um, and certainly I do look around my car park at other cars on charge and I do kind of observe their charges and it does worry me a little bit uh, that some people are uh, risking it. I might invest and actually and just give them all presents, uh, proper charges actually. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Do subscribe. Make sure you check out all the links below because I'll leave every link to everything that I've mentioned in the description below and in the pinned comment actually in the comments as well. Go and give me an oi oi if you've got this far in the video and I'll see you all very, very soon. Take care of yourselves, look after yourselves. I'll see you all very soon. Bye now. She's a roller coaster.